guys modifying some uh, number four and number three long springs base plate them you know normally chains over here base plating them putting uh, 18 inches of chain on some of them I'm laminating them I'm using a uh, five millimeter welding rods for the laminations then I'm putting a posi trip pan on them and then on top of it I'm welding a uh, electrical knockout lid and give myself that big pan that I like I'm going to show y'all how I'm doing these because I know uh, some guys have a hard time figuring out how to modify these they can be a little bit of a chore but they're a lot, a lot better modified that base plate and that fuzzy trip style uh, pan because on the regular pans on these you can't control the pan tension first thing right here on the end where it connects that chain just gonna take a pair of poke cutters cut it right here and right here because I, I ain't gonna reuse that I ain't got no need in it, so I just take the bolt cutters and cut it. If you want to reuse them, you'll have to pull the jaws out of the trap and take it off the spring. It takes a little while to do that, so just cut that dude off there and there's that. Now, you'll need a pair of ice, or channel locks hammer a punch that's kind of small on the end a pair of vice grips and the bolt cutters of course but you want to do right there in that dog right here I hope y'all can see that where the dog connects you just put your punch right in there That'll open that dog up. Take it out and some way on that pan. See, these pans have no no way to adjust it. I don't like it. They're all right for in the water, but it kind of makes it hard to use in the dirt. I mean, I do it, but it's a lot better having that having one where pan tension. But on the back side. There's a little spot where this pinches together, just like the dog is. Take your punch, put down in that little hole where it pinches together. Sometimes they can be a little bit of booger to get back out, but they come out pretty easy. You just got to play with them some. Now that trap is tore down, ready to be modified. Next thing I like to do is take the uh, bracket that comes with the posi trip pans. There's the pan. I'll come with a little bracket right here. Take your trap, flip it over, and you want to put where the boat, the boat goes through, like that right there. Hope y'all can see that from my big hand. You want to set it right there, and you take your uh, channel locks. Squeeze it as much as you can. on each side and you can't get it squeezed all the way with a pair of channel locks so that's where the vice grips come in so they're still they're still up a little bit hope y'all see that so I'll take you on vice grips then and just finish squeezing it down flush
some of them can be some boogers getting them to squeeze down like you weld them. Sometimes you just gotta go the whole length of it squeezing down on some of them for some reason. They don't all do good. But there, you can see I've got it squeezed completely flat to that. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is base plate them. Now one thing I like to do, personal preference here, but your D-rings, they're not gonna be welded. They're just, they're uh, just pressed together. Now that's all right, but you're already gonna have to be welding your base plate on more than likely. You could rivet it or bolt it on. But since you're already gonna be welding, what I like to do is just come, on each side, put a little bird eye tack on each side of it, and that will just go ahead and keep uh, it from straightening out. You know, you catch a big coyote, or heaven forbid you catch a calf or a deer in it, <clears throat> it less likely to straighten that out and get away with your trap. But you can go ahead and put a little bird eye tack on that, and it'll save you a headache in the long run.
little bit more work right now, but it ain't hardly nothing to do it. So why not do it and save yourself a headache later down the road when time is everything when you're trying to run a long line or whatever. Next thing I like to do, take my chain and go ahead and put it on. It all comes in one bag, but I like to separate them out if I'm not going to do them all in one day. That way I don't have to dig through all of it to get a nut and a boat and a dog and a pan all out. It makes it a little bit easier on you if you ain't going to do them all in one day. <clears throat> then you can just take your dog, put it right in that hole. Don't put it backwards like I just did, but <clears throat> put it in there. And take your uh, 
channel locks. And squeeze it back down, or squeeze the new one down, I should say. That's all there is to it. Now some guys will put a little bit of a tack on that. I never mess with it. I bite my tongue. I've never had a problem with a dog getting uh, pulled off. I've had a few bent, but you ain't gonna help that. But it'd be a good idea if you're worried about it, put a little tack on that. <laughs> then all there is to this, just line your pan up with them holes. Sometimes if you don't get that just right, it'll take a little bit of a persuasion to get it to go on through. What I do sometimes when I go to put that the base on there for the pan, I'll go ahead and put my bolt in to get it all good and square, then pull it out before I tack it, because if you don't pull it out before you tack it, you'll get little BBs on that screw, and it'll make it real hard to get through them holes and hard to get your nut on there. Cause they're drilled to fit perfect. There ain't much, much room in there. And I always just use my channel locks to have them get a wrench or something. Made a Phillips head screwdriver. Make sure it's sitting flat, sitting pretty flat. If it's angled up, you can take your pair of pliers right here where your dog is and bend that. If it's angled up or down, you can bend that in or out and that'll adjust your uh, pant to get it level. Uh, pull that way up, that pan way up like that. Cause what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna show you how to offset them. Now you know, well you may not know, but on these old traps, they don't bunch of them ain't offset. Now you can grind an offset into them. I don't much like doing that. It takes a little bit too much time. What I've done for years though is just take some wire, some hay wire or whatever, and uh, just wrap it around that jaw, tie it off you'll have an offset that way but while I'm already welding on these and everything I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a good offset in there pretty easy to do and I'll show you how I do that so all I've done is I took just a little piece of that rod I'm using to laminate these it's either a five millimeter three sixteenths welding rod and cut it to about an inch, inch and a half long. If you get it too long, it won't fit right here very good. But it's gonna go right, right here on the up and down part.
get that as flush as you can with that jaw or it'll catch them. When it fires, they'll catch and it won't let it close. see that right here is where that piece is I always like, like to say like take a test fire make sure it ain't gonna uh, hold anything up up a little bit too high so I'm gonna take it out I'm gonna break it off there see if I'd have went ahead and welded that completely up then you're gonna have to sit there and tinker with it with a grinder or something trying to get it out of there and it still ain't gonna be real easy to get off anyway I'm still going to have to do a little bit of grinding, but putting just a couple little bird eye tacks on there, it saves yourself from having big problems down the road. Well, not down the road, but when you go to use it, you weld that thing all the way up, and then you see it ain't going to work, then you're going to have to grind it all off. Versus putting a couple little tacks, I just got two little low spots to grind off of there. nothing to it. We'll try this again. get the full size all the way across it goes from about where you want it and it gets a little bit smaller on this side now I could go ahead and open it back up put one in here on this side but I think I'm just gonna leave it like that on some of these I've been using a smaller rod on some of them I've used a one eight And it's keeping the distance the same across here, but it's not a real good offset. Which here in Oklahoma, it, it don't specify how much offset it's got to be. But a smaller rod, it works good too. And you won't have it like a big gap and a smaller gap, but it's a lot easier than grinding the offset in there. But I thought I'd show you all that part of it. You may not want to do that. You may want to go ahead and grind them in. I've done it both ways. They both have the same outcome.
I hope that'll help some of you guys out that have been wanting to modify some long springs. I'm sure I missed something. But uh, this one here is one I put laminations on. I didn't. I ain't gonna laminate all my traps. <clears throat> I laminated some of them. That way, if I want to use them for beaver trapping, I ain't gonna drown my beaver. I can use these with laminations because I don't always uh, drown my beavers. And I like that lamination. If I'm gonna be catching a beaver by the front foot, it holds on more. If it <clears throat> does, if the jaws do get him on the wrist, that lamination will be up higher where there's some actual muscle and stuff and it'll hold on better. You won't have a problem with the ring offs as bad. But that's how I laminate my traps on these long springs, get rid of that pinch pan. And here's one we just done. It's a lot better trap in my opinion than having a chain over here and having a floppy pan. You actually can adjust your pan tension. And, and I like that animal to be pulling from the bottom of the trap, not over here on the spring. I think that's better on the trap itself. You catch them big old coyotes that like to fight like the Dickens. Pulling on the center of that trap's a lot better than them putting all the pressure on one side of it. <clears throat> But hope that helps some of y'all out. And I'm sure I missed some stuff. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know. Anything y'all would like to see. But uh, that's all, really all I can think of on modifying these. <clears throat> and it's the same way. Number twos, number threes, number fours, they all they all work the same way on that posi trip. <clears throat> and the reason I was talking about tacking that the base for that posi trip, you don't want to lose it anyway. But a dozen of these dead gum things is fifty dollars. So I mean I'll take a little bit of precaution, put a little bit of tack on there, keep from losing it and having to work on it in the field but plus that goes if you lose very many of them which it ain't gonna happen very often but if it was to happen to you that's quite a bit of money goes adding up fifty dollars for a dozen or i think they're 550 for one so but on them posi trips like the dog comes not latched Maybe y'all can be able to hear this. Right there. And that tells you exactly where that pan needs to be. See, it's pan says pretty daggum level. Now, long springs, and some guys don't like them. What I don't understand is they say, well, they're slower than a cool spring. Yeah, they're slower, guys. But here's the deal. It ain't like that animal don't do like us when we're messing with a trap. You know, when us trappers are messing with them, watching the trap fire and stuff, what do we do? We sit here and we just barely pull on that pan until it goes off. Well, that gum old coyote, beaver, whatever it might be. I heard Clint Locular talk about this on a podcast, and I just thought I'd cover it a little bit <clears throat> because it made sense the way guys think about it. And if y'all heard that and y'all didn't really understand what he meant, I'm well, this kind of give you a demonstration. I showed you how we do it. Well, the animal, they just walk up there, and they're in momentum. Their foot's going down. It's going to catch them. They have no time to jump out of that thing. <clears throat> Long Springs has caught animals for years and years. And you, 
I was catching animals with long springs before a cool spring was even thought of. I mean, they're great traps, especially if you do these little modifications I've been doing. Because, uh, <clears throat> only thing bad about long springs is dead gun things are still just as high as a cool spring. Now, myself, I ain't gonna go buy brand new long springs. I'd rather buy the cool springs, being they're right at the same price. And actually, most long springs are a little bit higher than a cool spring. Last time I priced them, I think the long springs was, I think for a dozen number threes or fours, I think they's about $200. I'm buying a lot more Bridger number three Douglases cheaper than that. But when I find these pretty cheap, um, somebody's got them wanting to sell them, I'll buy them. I actually bought, I think I bought two dozen of them from Jeb last year. I think I gave, I think $13 a piece for them. Which is still pretty high considering what new cool springs are. But I like the long spring. It beds good. I don't like them in rock. You got to have a pretty big trap bed for them. But if you're in good ground, I like them. They bed a lot easier. Now, on rocky ground, though, Cool Spring's better because you ain't got a big, big, big old trap bed for them. But with them few modifications, they're just good as a Cool Spring, I think. But if you have any questions about it, please let me know. I hope I covered it good for everybody. <laughs> Another thing, I've got a new little toy. I went. Ain't gonna have as many uh, shaky videos. Hope, <coughs> excuse me. Hopefully, ain't gonna have as many shaky videos. I ordered me a tripod for my cell phone to set on. I mean, I'm sure we'll still have a few shaky videos, but uh, it's sure gonna help things. Be able to, well, I'm showed how to make sets and stuff instead of having to show a little bit, pause it, make another one. And so on and so forth and do all the editing I just film the whole thing <clears throat> and I know some of you guys when y'all watch some of them videos saying golly man it's like I'm riding the daggum Titanic out there in the ocean well this will fix a lot of that problem there will still be some but that's a good investment I made I'm pretty happy with it but uh till next time guys